The Unshackled Waves, episode 237. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have you company. In this year's federal election, there are a range of minor parties contesting the Senate. It's a higher bar for them to be elected this time, needing 14.3% of the vote in the state to win a Senate seat. One of the parties contesting the Senate is the Great Australian Party, or GAP. It was founded by a number of X1 Nation Party members and has constitutional rights as its central focus. Its most high-profile member is former One Nation Senator Rod Cullerton. He was found to be ineligible by the High Court back in 2017, but he is back this election Election, contesting the West Australian Senate with GAP, and here's my guest today to discuss his political journey and his campaign with GAP. Rod, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for having me on. Now, you're out on the road in uh, Western Australia campaigning at the moment, uh, so uh, it's been great that you've been able to stop and give us your time, and there's a bit of wind in the background, so I'm sure our audience will understand. Yeah, and I just have to say I apologise for that, but uh, we're on a very tight schedule. We've come through Kalgoorlie, we've come out of Esperance, and uh, we're now just stopped at Ravensthorpe to do this interview on the run. So uh, we'll try and do it as best we can. Now, you were first elected as a One Nation Senator in 2016 uh, during the double dissolution election. What attracted you to uh, stand for the party and get involved in politics? Well, look, um, to be honest, I never wanted to be a politician. Um, I essentially played an important role in the, um, in the uh, financial sector, how the banks after the uh, GFC were taking a lot of farms around Australia. Uh, they were basically defaulting uh, thousands of farmers, not on monetary default, on uh, a non a non monetary default, and it was really sad because we need to keep our farmers are the best conservationists, and they you can't breed that knowledge in uh, in rural Australia. So I was invited to give as a major um, you know contributor and someone that understood. You know this big asset for the it was the biggest asset for Asia Grab in the nation history, and I was called to Parliament in federal Parliament to give evidence into banking inquiries into impaired loans, and it was through that presentation uh, I wasn't aware that Pauline Hanson called in. It was at the Novotel Wentworth in Sydney, and Pauline Hanson approached myself after the address and said you must stand as a politician you you know it was good and i just said no you can offer me a million dollars and i declined that i just want to uh, have the farmers get their farms back including mine and uh, that's how it all started to be honest so your approach you didn't actively see the seek out the nomination no no not at all and um we and and that's where that anthony fells he was actually chosen, unbeknownst to me. Uh, Anthony Fells, who's running for Clive Palmer, he, he was, Pauline had already chosen him as a candidate, but uh, obviously had a change of mind when she saw my presentation. And um, she continuously contacted me. I kept declining the offer. Uh, however, when I was convicted in absentia for that key in Gyra, um, although it's given me a fair bit of grief, as everyone would know, it was the, the whole reason why I picked up the phone and said, bugger it, uh, you know, I, this is just unacceptable. Australia's out of control. And I picked up the phone and I said, I'll run run for the candidacy for, for the federal Senate because I believe we needed to get into the High Court of Parliament to make changes. We, we just couldn't get a clear shot shot in anywhere. So, um, and, and Pauline immediately got on a plane and came to Western Australia and it all developed from there. Now, it, with that uh, larceny conviction, which was quashed in the end, that's uh, 
that's what cut short your Senate career by the the High Court uh, because uh, you were convicted at the time. And uh, then there was also a finding by the Federal Court of, of bankruptcy. Now you've um, f fought uh, both of these uh, charges all the way. You call yourself a senator in exile. Can you just uh, explain that? Well, you're incorrect. Uh, that's a presumption. That That is what's being portrayed out there. That is, um, and no offence, I have to state it for the record as it is, but what you've just said there is a nonsense. Um, and I'm, I'll tell you, the, you know, the, 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 I'll give you the short narrative of it. Um, when you're elected, um, first of all, when I chose to become a member of parliament um, ad, ad hoc, uh, and I said to Pauline Hanson at the time, uh, I had these scars. I told her I will stand. She knew the reason why I was standing because I had been convicted in absentia uh, because I couldn't get to Armidale in New South Wales. It was geographically impossible. I, I uh, sent all my itinerary through to the Armidale registry and said, look, I, I cannot get there because unfortunately I was in court for another matter. That was the straw bales that was on the 1st of March. The solicitors and the town agent that we had ready to go to Armadale had uh, made a, an error uh, through Levitt Robinson, through the solicitors, that it was on the third. It happened to be the second. Um, and I just, just geographically couldn't get there. I, I even went to the extent that I went to Qantas and got the itinerary. Even if I um, took the midnight horror, I couldn't get on a Dash 8 out of Sydney and be in Armadale, you know, bright bright eyed, bright eyed and, and bushy tailed uh, before court. So I made um, uh, arrangements for the magistrate to contact me by phone. My plea was not guilty. And um, it was for a key of no commercial value. It got lost in a scuffle. And obviously with what was happening at the time, not only me, but a number of farmers, guys coming onto properties with no paperwork, you know, as a director of a company, uh, there's got to be proper due diligence and they didn't have paperwork and so forth. So, look, that's that's the reason um, why there was a conviction in absentia. Uh, however, when when I when I um, sorry, when I I took the position of of um, of nominating, I spoke to Pauline Hanson. I got her to uh, speak to her lawyer, which was Danny Ede. And I said, I have got this conviction in absentia. However, Section 25.1 of the Crimes Act 1999 was the section that um, applied to me. A local court must not, that's a, that's a command, must not make any of the following orders in relation in re respect to an absent offender. And little a, people can go and look it up, it's the Crimes Sentencing Procedure Act 1999, New South Wales. And it says a not must not impose an order of in sentence so so i could never be sentenced however i never consented to the jurisdiction of the high court because section 47 of any question or disqualification is a question that must be dealt with by the house and you cannot override privileges and and go behind um, the constitutional law that's how the parliament works because uh, essentially, you have to uphold the law. A stream can't rise above its source and no subordinate jurisdiction in a public court can hear the matter. Now, I actually had it, um, went to the vote in the Senate and managed to p m pass a motion of 163, all the referrals or purported referrals, because um, actual referral was done without the Senate, a meeting of the Senate, which was correct, wasn't correct and section 22 had been breached by a former senator the president Stephen Parry so everything was called back to the to the chamber so um, you know we 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 had to follow the law and everyone knows when i gave a a sworn public duty to uphold the law um, you know i have to do that to the people that's what i did i took an oath in the parliament and the the you know a stream can't rise above its source a public court cannot hear a, a question of qualification or disqualification without a referral and everyone knows that there is uh, a procedure of law you know until the parliament otherwise provides which is through 
Section 376 of the Commonwealth Electoral Act. The House uh, sits as a meeting. The, 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 the Member of Parliament put, states his case to the House and then the House votes. And then if the House is uh, in favour or unanimously well, comes up with a positive um, uh, vote uh, to refer him off down to a public court, well, that's OK. But uh, there was never a referral for me to go to a public court uh, into the court of disputed returns. And, and people have got to remember this. When you get a referral out of the House, you're not going to the High Court. You're going to the High Court sitting as the Court of Disputed Returns, which is a defined jurisdiction that in actual fact is where the Electoral Act has applied for, um, you know, for this remedy. So uh, I have never consented to under my privileges and I have never, ever had a referral, a, a bona fide referral to send me to a public court over disqualification uh, or a vacancy, which is uh, which is paramount in Section 47 of the Constitution, and that's what my position's always been. So what? A court goes ahead. I, I was never, I never participated in any court because why would I? Because in a public court, parliamentary privileges they throw out all your affidavits. It's actually unlawful for a public court to hear, receive evidence, um, to, um, you know, take any submissions, make any 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 determination of proceedings of parliament. It cannot go into that jurisdiction. So that's why I'm still a bona fide uh, senator and my brother-in-law has been filling a vacancy. He was never elected. So he's like a filling in the tooth. And until that tooth heals, uh, then I go back in. But unfortunately, Peter, uh, he went on the interchange bench and um, we can't get him off the field and I can't make him come off the field. And uh, essentially the unfortunate part is he hasn't been getting a kick of the footy and both Pauline and, and One Nation have really let down all Australians because uh, we could have had these bankers wound up two years ago. So obviously you've put in a considered defence about what happened to you in the, the High Court, but obviously uh, the reason I ask the question is because that's all the, the mainstream media want to focus on is uh, what's uh, your, your dealings with the court and they've uh, accused you of making a, a false declaration uh, on your nomination form saying that you're an un undischarged bankrupt. So given that that's all the media ever focuses on about you, why do you want to make a, pl a political comeback given that you're up against it? Well, I'll reiterate, I just said it earlier, I gave a sworn public duty to uphold the law and, and I will do that. And um, we don't want to be setting case precedents. We've got too many members of parliament going in there and giving the powers back to the court to, um, to um, you know, essentially make make uh, the, the parliament powerless, like giving the, the final determination of the court. So they're in breach of the constitution. Unfortunately, we've lost our privy council and that's why I've got a team in um, in London. We need to bring back our privy council to to make sure that um, that uh, you know these parliamentarians are, are, are held to account. But let me tell you this: um, the High Court, sitting as the Court of Disputed Returns, has a section under the uh, Electoral Act, which is Section 360 of memory. And don't quote me on this, but I, I'm pretty sure it's 360. Uh, where you can't, you don't have any right of appeal. So who'd want to enter a jurisdiction like that for a start? And of course, you can't put in um, any um, any uh, submissions or affidavits because they throw them out under parliamentary privileges. And that was actually shown. We tried to adjourn the adjourn the courts on the day, and they just basically threw all out the affidavits. So they they completely um, declothed me and and said, look, you know, go and try and you know, I, I was left to free. So. The point is, is simply this. I am not a bankrupt. I do not have a trustee that controls my affairs. I'm, I'm, I've been paying for all this high qualified legal uh, counsel. Uh, it's cost me a lot of money because I don't want to see bad precedents set in law. I've got a, I'm, I'm financing a team over in London and I'm financing my own political party. So this is all a nonsense that the fake news and media, and this is why I'm very reluctant to go on and, um, and you know, uh, do an interview with the media because they've got it wrong. They just want to make it look bad so they can sell papers. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the law. 
what my constitutional role and duties are as a federal senator for the representation of of Western Australia and, and 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 in effect of all Australians because it's important. It's federal federal parliament, and and these courts are just basically I think they're above the parliament. It's a big ego trip. And let me tell you also that the High Court, when it deliberated its answer, got away with with altering the act. They they section 25.1 little a of the Crime Sentencing Procedure Act, where it mandatory says must not. They turned around and took out the word must not and replaced it with may not, which they got me on the conjunctive part of subject to sentencing. So, you know, it was, but under section 368 of the Commonwealth Electoral Act, real justice does not need to be observed. So they can lean against the bar and say, oh, well, we'll just take out must not and put may not and that'll hook him and, and that's enough to do him. Well, I don't accept that. So I'm a senator in exile. I've got that out of Parliament. I've, I've gone into the House of Lords. I've gone to the Privy Council. The Privy Council says unless Section 47's applied in the Parliament, there's no subordinate jurisdiction. Public court can remove you from the Parliament and abuse your privilege because uh, parliamentary privileges has Article 9 of the Bill of Rights and they're, they're rights that have come right through. Otherwise, we're just um, basically going to allow the, the public courts to run roughshod over the Parliament. I won't do that. And if it, it's not about the money, you know, and, um, and, and and I didn't participate in those court hearings. So because it was unlawful for me to do so, and why would I when I couldn't bring all my evidence in? Well, you're certainly not daunted by the the challenge of uh, taking on the High Court, but as we've seen in the in the last term, the the High Court has decided to claim uh, plenty of scalps. Let me tell you this: on the first of December two thousand sixteen, I successfully passed a motion in the House, Motion one six three, which summons Pauline Hanson and the Attorney General to come back to the chamber and explain why they withheld the the facts and why the um, agreed facts by the Australian government solicitors signed off saying I could never be sentenced. Why they still went ahead with a motion to refer me down to the court when Pauline Hanson or my former party leader knew I could never be sentenced. She had legal advice that I could never be sentenced. I had shown both her and her the agreed facts of the Australian government solicitors said that I could never be sentenced. So I'm not sure why Pauline and George Brandis, who now has fled off to London, um, which we, you know, it, w why they still went and referred us and, and put all that financial hardship on all that financial pressure on the public purse. But Motion 163 was an estoppel. No senators should ever have been referred down to a public court until that motion was debated by law in the Senate. So uh, pretty much what the um, government did is just gave a... a, um, a, a, a leg of lamb to the bloody crocodiles down there and they all had a big feed at the, you know cost millions of dollars and you know people said oh well why don't you just give up well you know i won't give up because that'll be breaking my oath and furthermore the government didn't pay my legal fees reimbursed me with my legal fees for a year and a half later and that was really hard so you know when you create a jurisdiction when you really have no cause of action. That's what I was really angry about with my former party leader and the government. There was no cause of action. They take me down there. It, you know, you can't go borrow money for, for legal fees. You've got to fund it yourself. You can't draw it out of companies because, you, you know, they, that's not your money to do. And that really puts a lot of pressure on. So uh, the equality of arms and how they dealt with me is absolutely disgraceful. And it's not how you start the race, it's how you finish. And I believe the way this great Australian party is going, we've got an out of control parliament that's not constitutionally compliant and running roughshod over anyone that wants to stand up and do great things for this nation, which, which I did. So I've always stayed true. I went as an independent. I knew the what policies I went to the party for. Pauline Hanson turned her back on a Royal Commission. I never took my eyes off a Royal Commission. She turned her back on foreign ownership with Shanghai Craig uh, buying that Kidman station or part ownership, you know, the backpackers tax, all of those things she did a turn, a U-turn on. So uh, I've stuck true to my word because that's that's what I wanted to do. And now that I've got a new bona fide party, which you're going to be asking me about is, and I'll give you the reasons where, where that legacy carries on. 
So obviously you believe that Pauline Hanson, she betrayed you and threw you under the bus, which is that there's quite a lot of X1 Nation people who have that view. And the, the registered officer of the, the Great Australian Party is Ian Nelson, who uh, on Four Corners described the party as a brutal dictatorship. Why does Hanson decide to exercise s such strict control over the operations of the party and why doesn't it work? Well, I can't speak for Pauline Hanson, uh, why her party doesn't work. Um, all I can say is that um, when I went there, I went there, I gave a commitment on the policies. Uh, my role was to bring back the constitution, which I certainly did by showing people that section 44 of the constitution is very, well, any parts of the constitution are powerful. We've just seen that. Hadn't been brought out of the drawer since 1973. Focus on the Royal Commission and uh, the judiciary. Well, I've certainly played in those jurisdictions. I apologise for the wind if it's starting to get a bit, a bit noisy. But look, the problem with Pauline Hanson, um, I don't find her a, a, a good leader. I really don't. Um, part of it, you must um, look at any party is about teamwork. Now, Pauline Hanson could have done a lot with her senators uh, at the time. Now, why did she refer me when I was very strong on the Royal Commission? You know, we'd been to Malcolm Turnbull. I passed the terms of reference also on the 1st of December. I managed to get Labor to support that and the Greens. I mean, that's an achievement in itself. And the crossbenchers. And yet she still took me uh, to throw me under the bus. And I, I, I couldn't work out why she wanted to throw me under the bus. In actual fact, um, you know, I've had to um, hang under there like Keanu Reeves and, and suck me stomach in every time we go over a speed bump. But not only did she throw me under the bus, she was putting it in first and reverse, trying to keep uh, you know, to, to do the job. I don't know why. Uh, I do believe that there are issues with her advisory. I do believe there are issues with certain people that high, ha, hold high uh, positions in her office uh, that, uh, you know, go against the ethos of what the party, the pedigree of the party originally. And I, I do think her stance on on a religion is too, is too, um, you know, it's just not acceptable in this country. We've got to got starting to respect. But I, I really, I really, uh, she didn't let me down. She let the Australian people down, and she really did because we could have, we could have had restitution for these, um, for the victims, not only for small business and farmers and and even people in mortgages. But you know, we had a block in the Senate, and it was pretty much to the point you got to do it this way or the highway, and and. That's not that's not good representation, and we need to go in and represent what the people wanted. And I wouldn't stand for that. So what I did is I didn't. I went as an independent um, because simply I wanted to take a step outside the party because I could see cracks appearing in the party, which that 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 uh, decision was right, as we can see uh, how it's all played out now. Um, but. So, so effectively, um, I still stuck by the policies, even though I went as an independent. But uh, because I gave the, the bank such a, a gr you know grief over the Royal Commission and its work, and we've seen that the, the major parties, Pauline Hanson, where's the restitution come? You know, we've had the Royal Commission. We, we haven't had a, a a banking Royal Commission. We've had a bankers Royal Commission because they got in and marked their own exam with it all. You know, diluted it all down. But you know that was that's enough to to knock the scab off the saw, and look what we saw. We only just touched the surface, you know, and it was never a bona fide royal commission. But the point is, where's the restitution? The governments go, oh yeah, they've done all these bad things and whatever. Where's the people getting getting their money back? And and that's why Great Australian Party is going to go back in and finish the job because. We're not, we're not uh, influenced by the big end of town. We're not taking donations from anyone that's going to influence us. We're a clean skin party <coughs> and in we go. So that's what we're doing.
Yeah, well, the Banking Royal Commission recommendation seems to be sitting on a, a shelf at the moment. Now, you turned out to be the, the first casualty of Pauline Hanson's new Senate team. Obviously, Malcolm Roberts uh, was also found ineligible by the High Court. Uh, then his replacement, Fraser Anning, quit the, the party on his first day due to staffing disagreements with Pauline Hanson. And then Brian Burston quit over a disagreement with Hanson over the, the company tax cuts policies. Uh, have you reached out to your former colleagues? What have you What have you made of what's happened to them? Oh, look, Brian Burson um, is a very is a poor performer, and I have to be honest, he's a poor performer. And I'm not trying to get personal there. He struggled as a as a whip, um, you know, to where the, we had to sort of take that over ourselves as an office, and and uh, he 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 really just wasn't geared up for it. Uh, Malcolm Roberts. Uh, Malcolm was pretty much Pauline's uh, lapdog. Uh, so, you know, what went with Pauline and he got a cookie and or a biscuit and uh, he went as well. So I can't work with people like that because they then started to turn, uh, go away from what their commitment was to be elected to their constituents. Why those you know, they went out with pre-election promises. <clears throat> that was their offer. The people of Western Australia or Australia, Queensland, New South Wales, uh, Brian Burson, they accepted their offer. So the people through their vote was their power of attorney. And, and then all of a sudden they get in there and, and there's, there's um, you know, a swing to the Liberal Party. I mean, Pauline Hanson real much, uh, I believe, you know, went straight to Malcolm. Uh, like a child going for chocolate, and uh, and there you have it, that she was voting for Liberal. Uh, the Great Australian Party, it's just one of many minor parties on the right uh, contesting the Senate this federal election, and with the, the new voting system and the fact that it is a full quota of 14.3%, it makes it even harder to, to get elected. Why is GAP uh, a better choice than, than all the others? You know, GAP straight down the middle. We're about restoration of the Commonwealth. And, um, you know, you don't shoot around corners. You, 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 it's a direct shot. We're, we're at the target and we're doing, we've got a great team uh, and we've got good marksmen. And the thing is, is we're going to put our message straight into Parliament. Restoration of the Commonwealth, bring back the Constitution, because that is the law. The parliamentarians are out of order. You know, we've got parliamentarians going in there swearing an oath to Queen of Australia. That's not the schedule of the first. Um, that's that's a that's a violation to the second clause of our great gift. You know, it, it might all sound a bit different, but if you go into the corporation world and you go and sign as Decmo Proprietary Limited or Decmo Australia, you've got to make sure you're signing the right entity. And these guys going in Queen of Australia is an absolute nonsense and turning around, oh, well, I can't. I'm not in uh, breach of the constitution because I haven't given an oath to it. You know, who, what are we? We, it, the, the, those who aren't against us are with us. And Australian, Great Australian Party has got great constitutional um, uh, experts, and they are. That I can honestly say that uh, my time in Parliament to read Odgers and to read the constitution and have access to the parliamentary um, library has really really opened my eyes where Australia has gone off the rails and and I've got a good team of people around me bona fide to where they're actually giving um, uh, advice to um, Queen's Council and and to the law university uh, lecturers and you know I've sat down with uh, ones in Western Australia and they go gee we never knew this existed and they're supposed to be upholding and going to the public telling people about the Constitution the point is Cullerton Senator Cullerton in exile had to um, bring 44 out onto the table and get the whole country talking about the constitution because Whitlam had put it in the drawer since 1973. We bring all that back and we'll, we guarantee just by, um, you know, taking the, the um, all the overgrown grass off it, uh, it's going to bring 30% back through the household of every family right around Australia. And we want to, we want our industries and all of our we want our, um, our police uh, services operating under the constitution. You know, we don't want people trying to ring for a cop, a, a policeman, and then they turn around and go, oh, well, you know, unless it's life threatening, we're not going to send one. We just want to come back to where, what our rights are, how we can protect our rights. And by bringing back the constitution, you know, that's the, that's the cure to the cancer, political cancer. There's no question. 
obviously uh based on what you've said you're very sure of your message but the 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 main challenge is being heard over all the other parties and given or well, clive palmer's budgeted to spend 80 million on advertising uh this election uh obviously if you turn on the tv or go on the internet you're seeing ad for his party all the time pauline hansen for all of her uh shortcomings has still got her brand and we've talked about that you're on the road uh throughout western australia what are you finding when you when you meet people what's your strategy to be heard over over all of these other people uh look everyone is concerned uh there's no question and to be honest, they have a reason to be concerned because this election is probably one of the most important elections since Federation. And they have every reason. I'm concerned. You know, my road crew are concerned. Uh, Australia has, has um, pretty much gone off the off the road. And, and, you know, it's a bit like a GPS. It's, it's sort of telling us to go, we've been told to go one way and we're right out into a green paddock and the freeways you know, up in the top right hand corner of the screen. It's navigated its way off our constitutional track. And the, the point is we have a constitution and that's the law. Now, a lot of people aren't familiar with the constitution, although they do understand that we do have a paramount law. Now, getting back to your question about talking to people at the seminars, we've had good turnouts at the seminars. We've, we've shown what our policies are and the restoration of the Commonwealth is ringing true with the people. They just want to get back at the Australian way. We've lost our Australian way. We've got infiltration of foreign ownership in this country. We've got a high mass of unemployment. I mean, I know the major parties say, oh, yes, look, we've got the employment figures up, but no one's actually got a guaranteed job. They're just working part-time here and nothing's secure to go and get a house mortgage and whatever. So we're about protecting the, the rights of Australian people because that keeps the family units together and that's what we want. So. Um, <clears throat> what is people? I don't need big amounts of money. I just need passion. I need a heart and I need to get the message out there. Clive Palmer <coughs> has been into Parliament before. You know, he's fallen asleep in Parliament. You know, what did he do last time? You know, it, do leopards change their spots? I don't know. He's putting a lot of money into um, into advertising. It's a, you know, I saw an article in the paper, you know, he's against all the Chinese and whatever, yet he's getting a million dollars a day for them. So it didn't stop him selling his company and rightly so, I don't get involved in his business. But, and good luck to him. You know, good luck. I, that's okay. However, is Clive Palmer going to make a change? I don't think he's going to come in as strong as what he, he thinks he is. I, I do notice that the polls out there are showing 73% of the voters are not going to vote for the major parties and I can see why. Now they need to have a look at the minor parties and get small parties into the parliament that are that act like a jury because the parliament, the Senate especially, is the High Court of Parliament, it's the highest jurisdiction in this country and it's very powerful and like I've said in my other videos, we must thank our framers that they put up such a great, you know, a jurisdiction that has got more, more power than the House of Lords. We've just got to have uh, people go in there that understand the constitution and can bring back the rights for the Australian people, which the GAP party is. We've got 12 highly skilled constitutional experts that know that um, uh, constitution back to front. It's just amazing when you go into a public court and you challenge it and you use it, that the judges don't even recognise it, yet you get into the high courts and Quick and Garen is one of the major tools that the Queen's Council take in. So once you go in and start going by inquiry to the judge, you start tying him up in knots and he starts agreeing with you. So the point is, it is our law. It is our paramount law. It is, uh, we don't need to re-invoke it. It is invoked. It will be upheld. The place to upheld it in the, is in the Senate because that's our constitutional role as, as members of parliament that sit in the Senate. That's why we're more focused on getting them in the, the upper house than the lower house and uh, just bring it back. And uh, but people will see immediately immediate changes in this country That'll just, it's, it'll be like putting your ear on the top of a crop. They'll just see the whole country start to grow. It's just fantastic. And we can't wait to get there to do it. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, the minor party uh, vote uh, th that's in the polls. I'm certainly hoping for a large uh, minor party presence, and I certainly don't think that Clive Palmer's uh, the answer. Like you mentioned, he was a disaster uh, the the first time around. Now, Gap has grown out of a activist group called Know Your Rights. Obviously, the the Constitution uh, is uh, your main uh, concern, uh, uh, based on what you've said during during this interview. Uh, is 
Can you describe exactly Know Your Rights, what, what it actually sets out to achieve? Well, look, um, no, no, I think we need to get that correct too. Uh, look, uh, get, uh, I've been invited as a senator. D look, Daryl O'Brien was part of my uh, team in um, while I was in Parliament. Okay, he 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 is a guy that I well, he's he's our candidate for the Senate for um, for Victoria. His knowledge is paramount. He is one of our leading experts on the Constitution. Uh, they are the best cave diver. I've got Peter Gargan, who's um, you know, one of the best cave divers, and he was the one that went down and found the Constitutional Report of 1988. Um, you, can't, you can't argue that evidence, and that's why when I went into the chamber on the 30th of, sorry, the 12th of September 2016, um, that, um, you know, I asked the question why, you know, the High Court wasn't issuing its writs in the name of the Queen, and of course they changed all the rules and I became uh, very known in the, the legal fraternity. Perhaps that's part of the reason why I got a touch up in their jurisdiction. But let, anyway, that's just a presumption too, but uh, I, I know how, how it all works. But um, the Great Australian Party didn't develop out of Know Your Rights. Um, it is, it is been, I've been asked to go into an interview with Know Your Rights. We, we, they have promoted uh, my position. It was always my ambition. The Great Australian, sorry, the Know Your Rights were going to uh, create their own um, political uh, party uh, I, uh, at the time, and they had certain members. And I, because Daryl and the extensive work that I've done with Daryl and Mike, who are just fantastic guys and great advocates for all Australians about knowing your rights, they've helped so many people out of sticky situations that uh, we thought there, there was good um, synergies there uh, that uh, we're all heading in the right direction. So what we basically did is said, look, you've got certain members, we'll have certain members. You know, this is all about the constitution, the ethos of your your um, passion is the same as the ethos behind my passion. Um, now we just got to, um, you know, develop a party and, and uh, they became involved in it it developed from there and and um, you know they they run their program as knows your rights and we're now we've been invited to talk we get to invite to talk and our candidate so it's 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 about getting the message out there and working together but they've been so fantastic in their um in their program and you know we've heard nothing but full praises i've been invited to talk at some of their seminars um and you know, Mike's involved uh, with the party as well, and so is Daryl, and and uh, yeah, it's prosperous times, and they're just fantastic guys to to have on board. Now, obviously, you're you're giving it uh, the the greatest go you can with with this uh, federal election uh, on the road. Is uh, what's the long term vision for for Gap beyond uh, this election? Like, you're based in Western Australia. Would you like to register the party at a state level for? 2021 where do you where do you see yourselves in the future so gap will be a force in the future it's a party that's gonna gonna come in it's a bona fide party it's a constitutional party it's gonna it's gonna run by the constitution and so it's gonna have a a uh, a main play in in politics so it's going to be an equal leader to the rest of them and i reckon it'll overtake them it's a it's the foundation of um it'll be the party that changed the the directionals i say saved australia and got the people to say look we want a legacy to look to leave to all our children and our grandchildren and gap great australian party for the great australian people you know great australian patriots and you know, for great Australian products and produce. And, you know, it, it just simulates with everything that Australia is about. And uh, we just need to uh, know that Gap's going to be around a long time. And that's why I founded it. It needed to be a clean skin. Um, you know, I've had other offers where I could have joined other parties. I don't want any influence. I want to go in bona fide, clean skin, off everything that's available to people already. And that's the constitution and this party will not deviate from that. I mean, all our candidates are taking a sworn public oath as per the schedule, and that's important. 
you know, as per clause two under to Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom. We've only got one queen. That's who we're upholding the pet. That's the concept. We're bringing the concept back and we're going to apply it and, and can't wait. And as long as people know that, you know, that's going to get done. There's no hollow promises here. Everything that we've said we can do are all permitted and lawful and passed and have been law for some time in the Constitution. And we're just here to to give that to the people because this is where the major parties have just really failed the people and are just stripping the whole country of its assets and nothing's coming back to the beneficiaries being all persons under uh, subjects under this um, under the constitution and that that's that's what this party's about well there's less than two weeks to go until uh polling day i'll let you get back to the campaign trail now you've been very generous with your time i know you said you don't do uh much media so i've definitely appreciated your time today and so has our audience they were wanting us to do an interview with with gap uh, so i hope that uh, they're able to learn a lot more about your party and i'll leave uh, links in the in the description now, hang on, let me tell you this, you got that wrong. I do plenty of media. I get invited to do plenty of media. I just don't do a lot of media on the run, on a park bench, sitting in drizzly rain, yeah. in wind. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But anyway, yeah. I've got my keep my hair dry, so <laughs> thanks very much. And that's the show for today. As part of our coverage of the federal election, we'll be airing an election night live stream. However, this time it will be an Uncuckables production with XYZ and the Rational Rise. Make sure you tune in from 6 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on Saturday the 18th of May on the Uncuckables YouTube channel for our continuous coverage until all the results and reactions have come in. Make sure you have subscribed to the Uncuckables on YouTube and allow for notifications so you can not just tune in for the live stream on election night, but our regular Thursday Thursday night live stream, which is on at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, which is growing in popularity. As Facebook is continuing to boot off anyone who has right of centre views, uh, make sure that you are following us on free speech social media and that you have an account there. We're on gab.ai slash the unshackled. We are on minds.com slash the underscore unshackled. We also have a MeWe page at mewe.com slash p slash the unshackled. And we also have our growing Telegram channel on the encrypted messaging service, which a lot of uh, right wing personalities have been migrating to. You can find us there at t.me slash the unshackled. Remember, the production of all our content is only made possible with the support of you, our followers. You can pledge over at patreon.com slash the unshackled or directly via paypal.me slash the unshackled. We also have our premium membership option on our website, theunshackled.net slash support options slash premium membership. Thank you to all those who've contributed recently. We're going to air on a Wednesday night, so stay tuned for Dear Beltran Live for her nationalism discussion with Blair Cottrell and Kwaku Aji. Until next time, thanks once again for your company and we'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.